No, Anthony. The charger works, sorry. It was just the cord. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm having trouble with the internet just, now. Yeah, one more minute for Michelle to get connected. Um, Anthony, not the, uh, Michelle's got trouble with the uh, Wi-Fi. Come on, here, fix it. We're connecting. We're connecting. You are. All right. I'm hoping it's not going to argue with Hampton. No, you want to do this? No. It's fun. I'm sure you can do that in the car. Where else? Do I want to ring the bell. Oh, the family. Oh, yeah, you can do it for years. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, it's been working all day. How are you doing, Marie? I'm getting there. Yeah? Good. Hey, I saw you. You look good. Last week. Look great. Last week, this week. You just came. Oh, oh. Silver lining. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look great. A nice long talk. Yeah. He's had a, an interesting life, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. I think I should be good to go. Thank you. you. I apologize. Yeah, she's good to go. Yep. Thank, Thank you. We've got to wait for Mike. Michelle, you all set? I am. Okay. Uh, it's a town, town Council meeting from North Brantford, Connecticut on Tuesday, uh, July 21st, 2020, in the Town Council Chambers seven at 710, 711. Mm -hmm. yeah, and there's something I want to say before we get started here uh, about the public participation. We're limited to 25 people in person. Also via, via Facebook at www.facebook.com slash TV or email comments to public comments at town of North Brantford, Connecticut, uh, dot com. Okay, let's start with a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Mayor, before we all sit down, I'd like to ask for a moment of silence in honor of Pat Young, who served this town in many capacities, including mayor, deputy mayor, town attorney, and council member. So I'd ask for a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice guy. Uh, Michelle, roll call. Mayor Viglione. Here. Deputy Mayor Zampiano. Here. Councilor Angeloni. Here. Councilor Diamond. Here. Councilor Judy. Here. Councilor Fawnen. Here. Councilor Code. Here. Councilor Paternoster. Here. Councilor Policia. Here. Okay. Uh, next is the minutes of the previous meeting. July 7, 2020, WPCA and Town Council minutes. I'll move the minutes. I'll second. All right. Uh, motion was made by uh, Councilor Duty and seconded by uh, Councilor Policia. Any discussion? Okay. 
Uh, we have a vote. Is it all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Rosie, you on? Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she is? She can hear us, yeah. All right. It, it's hard to hear, but I'm trying to follow along. Okay. All right. Uh, next is a COVID-19, uh, town manager report, COVID-19 update. Yeah, so I have uh, the graph uh, in there provided by uh, the health district uh, that we're holding steady, uh, pretty, pretty steady in terms of the latest number um, went from uh, 84 to 89, uh, five additional cases since the last uh, report, and that's held steady at uh, 89. But uh, the, the new graph uh, uh, also, I just wanted to point out that, um, you know, we're, some of these, the information coming out of the state is awful hard to track, and the, the, the department is doing the best it can. And it's also trying to get a a hold on, on, on what age groups are, are affected or are testing positive, plus the new uh, total uh, since the pandemic began, to total number of residents tested 1,475. Uh, and again, these are cumulative, so it's 89 since the beginning uh, of the pandemic. Um, so we're, you know, we're holding steady, and that's, uh, that's, good, that's good news. We're doing what we need to do. Uh, the uh, state is also updated. I just took this off the site this afternoon. The travel ban, uh, and last week was at 22, is now uh, risen to 31 states that are on the list, uh, effective this afternoon. So that's uh, that's ever increasing um, with respect to uh, the guidance and uh, issues uh, 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 tracking folks coming in from other states into Connecticut and the uh, self quarantine isolation. So. Um, continue to monitor that. Uh, we have a weekly meeting uh, with the health director on Thursday mornings. We'll continue to do that and uh, I'll keep providing the information. If there's anything specific uh, that the council members would like to know for the next report, I'd be happy to get that. Uh, just let me know. Shoot me an email and give me a heads up. Um, I can get that information. Uh, so COVID uh, with respect to town hall and other services are going well. Uh, with the tax season um, moving along 8.30 through 11.30, Monday through Friday, and then uh, by appointment only in other departments by, by appointment uh, is still working uh, rather well. Um, library uh, still doing well, uh, patrons happy, uh, no reports to the contrary. So uh, everything is moving along and still uh, providing services. So um, not much to report, uh, we just continue to monitor. Mike, are the libraries open all day? Uh, no, uh, most of their hours, um, they're standard hours. Um, you know, they've had to cut back and modify a little bit, but uh, okay. they're doing well. Okay. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say something if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, even though we don't have jurisdiction over Little League, uh, Little League is doing a really good job. Um, I was a little hesitant. I'm an umpire, so I was a little hesitant on getting kids on the field. Uh, but literally came down from Williamsport with some pretty strict rules. And I'm very happy to say that North Brantford, Joe Mascari in the league, is doing an outrageous job in controlling it. Uh, the parents are all in the outfield uh, where the home runs are. They have to be out there. The kids have to bring their own chairs. So they sit outside the dugout. They're not even allowed in the dugout. They gotta sit six feet apart. Uh, they have to bring their own equipment. The umpire is behind the mound, so he's not close to the catcher. And I think that it was good that they came out, get the kids out. And I have to say that the games that I've done, North Brantford literally, not travel, they've done an excellent job in controlling it. And we have the total support of uh, the president of the league. So I just want to let you know, I mean, the kids are out there enjoying themselves, and the league is abiding by every rule that's set down by Little League, even as far as the balls are concerned. Really? Coaches control the balls for their team, and umpires don't have the balls. You hit the ball out, that coach throws it to the pitcher, and no one else can touch the balls. So they did a really good job, and that's all I have. A lot of this loop comes from Williamsport? Uh, the, the restrictions came down from Williamsport as far as the umpire be, being behind the mound, um, and as far as the kids being outside of the, the dugout. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they have to be six feet apart with their own little chairs from home, and the parents are in the outfield, and they don't congregate. So, you know, they're doing the best they can. I mean, I haven't had, I've had to speak to one kid about spitting, because that's another no no is spitting, you know, batter spits. Um, but usually coaches and parents can be, you know, a pain, but these guys are doing a really good job. When the coach goes out and speaks to the player, he puts his mask on. So they're a buy and buy every rule that came down from uh, Williamsport. Good. So it good. is a positive sign. It's got to be a whole different feeling calling strikes and balls from the pitcher's mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on what side you look at, too. <laughs> for me, it's better because I sleep anyway. So for me, um, but yeah, there's one umpire out there, so he has to watch all the bases also, which is difficult. Um, but they're doing the best under the circumstance. So I just want to pay them a compliment. I'm glad they're doing something because the kids, they need it so so much this year, being trapped in the house and stuff yeah. like that. So I was a little leery, but I have to say that now that I've been out there a couple times, I'm not even close to them. They can't touch each other. They can't, you hit a home run, you, just, you run in, that's it. That's great. So they are following the guidelines set by everybody. They playing the same amount of games, Lou? No, they're going to play. Uh, they started, I think, the week after 4th of July, and they're running to mid-August. So they're playing, currently they're playing uh, two games a week. And now they're, they're allowing uh, a travel, and now another town to come in. So they're playing probably two, four, six, eight, eight, 12 games. So it, it keeps them active. All right, thank you, Lou. Oh, thank you. Uh, next we have this, uh, steep funding. Yeah, I just wanted to add this to the agenda to brief you on the opportunity uh, for steep funding that was just announced uh, a week and a half or two weeks ago uh, from the governor's office. And uh, we could position ourselves in the application unless there's some objections that, that uh, I'd like to put together an application for the police department and try to obtain some funding to uh, uh, lower the cost there or find some funding to uh, you know, pay for some component of that multi-million dollar uh, facility. So it is eligible, and uh, I did speak with the representative, uh, Candelora of Indian, about that, and uh, he thought that would be appropriate, uh, given the fact that the council is moving forward on that project. So unfortunately, the, the economics are such that the, the uh, awards are uh, much lower this year than they were in, in previous rounds. So I think, you know, you could, Easily have gotten 250 to five, uh, 500 thousand in previous rounds. This year's uh, cap is 128 thousand and change. It's uh, 128 260 or something like that. Um, so we'll try for the maximum uh, put together, unless there are objections, and, and uh, try to get some uh, <coughs> funding for the for the police department. Whatever we can get. Yeah, yep. yeah. I also have uh, Roger Salway working on exploring uh, potential uh, for USDA. Uh, grant that might be possible. It's a long shot, but we're going to give and pursue that angle as well uh, for this you know, same project if we can. Good. All right. Thanks, Mike. Now, next is review uh, of department budgets, fiscal year end. Yeah. Um, I got out late today, but uh, via email, uh, the, uh, the run that uh, Anthony provided in terms of looking at uh, year end. Um, money for each department, the major three obviously being uh, police department, public works, and uh, rec department, and obviously they are on the agenda. You have uh, some uh, contingency transfers, uh, and that's what Jesse's here for rec to, to, to talk to that. Um, but um, again, the caution is it's not exactly down to the, to the penny with uh, still outstanding uh, bills to, to reconcile, uh, but it's a uh, a, f a pretty good, pretty good indicator of what uh, they'll be looking for. Uh, I mean, what they'll end up with uh, as we come into the year end. So, I know some of the council members had uh, asked questions about that and uh, couldn't get it in time for the packet, but got it out today. And it, we could certainly uh, add this back to the uh, uh, August 11th if there are, are questions. And I believe the police department is obviously going to go through. Uh, as well and look at uh, uh, potential requests coming from them. So I'll be happy to circle that and uh, bring it back for the 11th. Yeah, that'll be good. 
Okay. Mike, when do, you, when do you anticipate that these numbers will be solidified? Yeah, good question. Um, I, I hope by we have a better <coughs> indicator and, and, and wrap up for, for August. Um, I don't see why uh, we wouldn't, uh, unless Anthony has any other crystal ball or, or comment on that uh, with respect to the numbers, Ant? I mean, we typically don't finalize the year until the end of August, beginning of September, by the time all the bills uh, come filtering in, payroll accruals, uh, things along that line. Uh, as, as you had mentioned, you know, the, the big hitters out there, uh, some of the transfers are being accomplished tonight. Uh, the biggest one that's out there is the Board of Education as well, still showing about a $2 million plus balance. We know they're going to uh, ask to allocate the 2% clause uh, to lock that up to move into 2021. And I'm not sure we haven't got their year end numbers uh, as far as their final accounts payable and final accruals on their end. Uh, so again, these, as Mike had mentioned, these numbers are, are far from the, the final numbers you're going to see in the audit. Uh, but it, overall, it's a very, it's a, it's a black year, a year in the black. So that's another, uh, another good thing. And uh, we can accomplish some capital items as well. So it, it's, it's a win-win situation. We're still adding to the fund balance. So it's, it, it's a very good year. So they're only able to. So my question is, and I don't know if anybody, everyone else can hear this, but so were all the departments notified that they had X number of dollars and if they wanted to spend something or to um, um, encumber it for June 30th? Uh, they, not at, at this point, not all of them, but the tomorrow's department head meeting will be reviewing that uh, and providing this, uh, this um, snapshot in terms of the uh, spreadsheet numbers. Uh, for tomorrow, and like I said, try to try to uh, lo look at those numbers of each department. If there are any issues uh, for bring back for the uh, August 11th meeting. Okay. So, Mike, all they, all we're looking at right now is for work done before June 30th, and just p paying for those previous services. Right? There's no right. there's no right. new spending. No, no, right. It's just yeah, capping the year end by June 30th. Okay. Uh, next, we have an up update on North Brantford Intermediate School brickwork uh, project. Yes. Yeah, so I wanted to just give you a quick update on that. Um, they're looking at. Well, I'm looking at uh, the quote and proposal from Martin Benazzi, who's the uh, architect that helped on the auditorium project in terms of writing, help writing the spec and the. Um, ad hoc group is looking to bring those services into the MBIS project. So uh, that uh, quote came in late today. I'm reviewing that and I'll be talking with uh, Fran tomorrow on that. But there, if you remember, there are, there are two issues um, with the MBIS, which is a much larger brick renovation cleaning project than the, than the auditorium, obviously. Um, the issue there that they found was in that roofing uh, perimeter roofing issue and the flashing involved there. So I think we've got to separate out uh, two issues there. And, and I think we want to do that item, smaller item first and getting that re uh, remedied or, or fixed, if you will, uh, before going on and having Benassi write the uh, spec for the entire uh, brick, uh, re you know, repointing and, and uh, ceiling and, and, and all of the brickwork that he needs to do for that. So it'll be on track uh, through this, uh, this month and next to try and get that uh, started so we, we stay out in front of it so we can get that um, bid spec done uh, and then get it ready so it's out on the street and uh, we can get some good, good pricing to set up for next, next season, next summer. Okay. At the ad hoc uh, meeting, they had talked about checking with uh, flashing over some of the doors and stuff too, right? Right. Yeah. So we're going to look at look at that yeah. because they they kind of think that if it was done like that on the roof, that that over the doors might be done the same way. So that mm -hmm. might turn into a little bit more work. But they're going to check. They're going to pull a couple bricks out just to see what the door flashing looks like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was one of those things we, we might want you know do it now, uh, at least inquire to it and probe and and, and check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, just make sure that you know we're, we're going to address that issue as well be smart to do that yeah so that's on you know that's progressing along and and uh, we've had you know good success with the architect and the 
the bid spec that he put together for the auditorium, we expect that we'll have a, a, a good product uh, when we get to the MBIS project. So it's on, it's on track. Okay. All right, next, next we have uh, citizen statements and petitions and correspondence. Do you have anything, Mike? I don't. There is one on Facebook, Mike. Okay. Can you read that? Uh, sure. It's a comment from Donna Persley. Uh, I'd like to make a few comments about the solar project that was discussed at the last meeting. First, in regards to the good letter from the town of Wilton. The actual solar farm is in Middlefield, not in Wilton. Will and is just reaping the savings, so of course they are happy. Uh, the three sites that I see as references, Middlefield is not in a residential area, very far from any homes. The New Jersey location is on a landfill, and the site in East Hampton is zoned industrial. That's comments from Donna Persley. Okay. Thank you. Nothing uh, via email or the public comment. Okay. Uh, next, we have resignations and appointments. There, uh, there isn't any, none. So we'll move to uh, old business uh, discussion and action. The first we have is discussion on RFQ slash P for North Bradford Police Facility, architectural engineering service table from table from July 7, 2020. Yes, I, I had asked we'd uh, table this one, uh, and I got direction and clarification, and, and certainly Councillor Judy can speak to this at the last meeting of the uh, uh, advisory uh, facility advisory committee for the PD. Um, we had uh, interjected and talked about it briefly, but uh, the difference there uh, in this contract uh, with respect to uh, item source section, I think it's section four um, or phase four, is that construction administration it was just a question of whether or not uh, that was the same as an owner's representative. It is not, and the recommendation of that committee was to uh, recommend that the council approve this uh, contract with these updates. Uh, in addition to uh, doing this, uh, we would ha also, I think the, the committee was gonna recommend to the council uh, when the time is appropriate to get the uh, owner's rep uh, in addition to what they would be doing in their contract under construction services. So their recommendation is that, that uh, council approve it. Well, they made, they made a motion and, and approved it to, uh, to go ahead with that. Um, and we have a suggested motion here that the town council hereby approves a proposed submitted, proposal submitted by Silver Petroselli Associates for A&E design services related to the North Brantford Police Department building project. And also, I'd like to add to that um, is that the building committee recommended that the building um, fees, building, ins what do you call it, building inspection fees or right. building, yep. building fees, inspection fees be waived. Uh, yeah, um, uh, permit fees. Yeah, building permit fees be waived. Right. Um, and the town council has that authority to waive it, so that'll be in my motion. Do you make a motion? Yes. I'll second. Okay. Uh, motion was made by Councilor Duty, seconded by uh, Councilor Diamond. Any further discussion? No. Can we have a vote, Michelle? Absolutely. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? Okay. Like just to clarify, I think the state education permit fees you cannot waive. Right. Yes. That. Yep. And the uh, the committee understood that too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's understood. It'd just be the local uh, building permit fees for the town that we have the that the council has the authority to waive. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. Okay. Uh, next is discussion on discussion of solar uh, power project with uh, Citrine uh, Power Table from June 16, 2020. Yes, yeah, so I know there was um, probably a lot of uh, information there to digest and to look at. Um, the only additional information uh, we had the uh, PowerPoint presentation that uh, uh, Chella had presented is in the, in the packet in which she had indicated the 
uh, reduction of panels and uh, moving the uh, project back uh, as well uh, off the road uh, in order to try and, and uh, accommodate or change the, uh, uh, the view of, of uh, the, the panels and, and so forth. Uh, I had simply added that I was able to get out to uh, the project in Middlefield um, right off of 66. It is isolated. It is not a residential area. Um, you really have to uh, get behind uh, Dunkin' Donuts uh, in order to, 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 to see it. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty obscure. But I think the, from the photo you can see that, you know, quite frankly, the, the, the fence and the, the panels aren't really that, that high. Uh, in, in our case, it, you know, I think there could be a, a, a case made in terms of shrubbery to try and, try and hide a portion uh, of the panels. But again, it's really hard to say based on elevations and sight Yeah, she mentioned that uh, when, we, when we met with her. Uh, it, it sounded pretty good to me. Uh, let, me uh, let me ask you a question here. Do we have any right to say no? This is private property. Well, so yeah. I think I, they're I, just looking for our, our blessing. Well, the one thing I think they can clearly do. control is whether or not we'll go to contract with them to take the power. Right. We don't have to do that. I think the devil that we've got to deal with is if we do everything we can mm -hmm. to oppose this project, they can still circumvent us and go to the state siting council and then make a deal with another town mm -hmm. for the use of power. So we could end up with okay. what I think all of us are a little bit concerned about in terms of appearance and not get the benefit from it. Right. have to factor both both sides of that. Okay. And, and Donna did make a good point. You know, everybody else, we're the only one that's sticking it in a residential area. Um, other towns have it industrial, commercial, you know, or, or out of the way, stuff. out of the way places. So, you know, this is something we're going to have to look at for 20 or 25 years. And what are we doing for a bond on that, Michael, to... Uh, they... Uh, well, if um, there's a, a, I believe, because you know this company's not going to be in business. In yeah, the decommission years. bond. Yeah, the decommission bond, right? That would be, uh, um, I believe, between the company and the and the owner to do that. But it certainly could be part of uh, our discussions or negotiation if we went that. We make sure that that's in in place. And I, you know, I think that's standard from what I understand. And and. Uh, would be part of this project to have that. Yeah, this is, that's a, that's yeah, a very just, important I piece. I knew it was kind of standard, but I just didn't want it to fall through our cracks. All right, no, yeah. Chella has mentioned it and said it would be part of this project, so um, I don't know that we can um, demand that, but I think we, we certainly uh, think it's a good idea to have that. Mike. They pretty much offered it. Yeah. 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 So I don't see why they wouldn't really go through it. should be a negotiation other than the amount. Yeah, right, right. Did, uh, have you talked to anybody from uh, Wilton? Right. Have you have you talked to anybody from Wilton or? Uh, no, Ro uh, Roger did that. I did this. I did the site uh, visit to Millfield, but he did didn't. he did he mention because they're saying they're proposing that we're looking at about ninety thousand dollars a year in savings. I'm just curious as to what they proposed to the other towns and then what actually came to fruition, whether it was actually close to that or not. Yeah. I, I have both Roger and uh, Chella on. If uh, if you want me to pose that to them, yeah, if you uh, would, yeah, I just please. I'm curious. Yeah, I don't know if you were able to hear that, Roger uh, and Chella. Uh, the the Wilton uh, project and the um, projected uh, <laughs> revenue savings uh, or revenue uh, and versus what was actual. Um, if that uh, that target was hit or if it was close. The projected, um, yeah, I heard the question, and thank you for letting us um, have the opportunity to speak. Um, it's an annual target um, that we had given them, and we always give a lower target. I believe they've surpassed that right now, but the project has only been operational for about seven months. Um, but they maybe they gave actual numbers to Roger. I haven't really followed up with them. We're planning another project actually in the town of Wilton. Um, on one of their properties. I can ask them tomorrow. I just spoke with the selectman today, but um, 
they may have given the actual numbers that they're realizing right now to the Rogers. So I'll just, um, I, I, I'll let him maybe speak about that. Right. I, I, you know, I talked to them and didn't even ask them about savings. In fact, uh, he offered that number. Um, in the other case, as you probably know, uh, they have shared with us the contract that was negotiated with uh, Citrine Power. So they were very open, and you saw the letters that were sent subsequently. So what were the numbers? Um, Roger, right. can you restate the numbers? Or do you remember the, or, or tell her the numbers for Wilton? The, the numbers for Wilton, I think for per megawatt, it should have been somewhere in the 60 to $65,000, but I'll confirm and get back to you. I'll have, um, why don't I confirm that to you? It's in Eversource territory. It was started to be developed two years ago. So the incentive package is a little bit different, plus the um, rates are different. The savings in UI territory are a lot more substantial. Um, their savings are going to be less than yours, but I, don't quote me on that. I know I, I showed them somewhere in the $65,000 range per megawatt, but let me confirm and get back to you in writing if they're actually willing to share. I think they will be willing to share. Why wouldn't they? And um, I'll have them sent to you. So you're, you're proposing in North Brantford a two megawatt system, right? Right. I couldn't hear that. Yeah, you're, we're the, under the proposal for North Brantford is a two megawatt system. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if the, if the incentives are better for UI, then we're really looking at at least 120, 130, but they're projecting 90. Is that what she's talking about when she undercuts it? Yeah, so uh, Councillor Pelicia is asking if uh, the two megawatt system it, it calculating should be potentially generating 120, maybe 130,000, and then and, and asking why the number 90, is that just based on a, a ultra conservative number? Um, based on a conservative number, because we just assumed on our savings on average that the UI rates are not going to go up since we don't have a crystal ball. And if you all decide that, um, you want to go down a path of negotiating a contract with us, we'll give you two options. One of them is a fixed rate contract. One of them is always a discount and it's a, a floating rate contract. Depending on which you choose, um, the savings changes slightly, but we're comfortable with telling you that you're going to get $90,000 more or less. Um, but if we surpass that, that's even better, of course. And, the, and sorry, one more question. Um, keep, keep in mind the generated power is directly driven by the weather. So, you know, the hours of sunshine and whether it's covered with snow for an extended period can increase or decrease the total generated power and therefore the rebate. Right. And there's another question, Chella, from, uh, from Council Felicia. So my understanding is, because we've looked into this for our home, I just want to make sure it's the same for the town, is that when during the negotiation process you negotiate a price per kilowatt hour or whatever um, and then that's locked in for the full term of the contract for 25 years is that correct yes that that is correct but there are certain adjusters in the contract um, that we present to you um, you know you know what God forbid there's a change in law there's some you know force majeure or catastrophe um, in every case um, you um, or, or let's just say something happened. Um, we'll go through all the scenarios and you guys can present different scenarios to us too and we can think and find solutions during the contract negotiation. But let's just say uh, one of the schools decided that, you know, um, they're, not, they're not going to participate in it or you, God forbid you close that school, right? You don't have the demand anymore. We can always find another um, town to step in um, in, in, in your shoes for the remainder of, of that. Um, so there's always ways of adjusting it. It's a fairly flexible contract um, because it's a lot more flexible than putting something on your own roof or on your own property because then you're actually locked into that. Um, but because it's virtual, there's a lot more flexibility built into it. Thank you. I just wanna go back to Bob's original question. The mayor said that it's private property, correct? So basically, his comment was that we give him the blessing, right? And then Mr. Fawn said, I just want to share my own mindset. Basically, 
if we say no, then they could outsource it to they could outsource it to another town. I think they could if they wanted to. Correct? I could be wrong. But I'm just saying the only thing we've got <coughs> discretion over is whether or not we want to enter into this to contract use it. that Sally is talking about, which right. gives us a discount on the electricity. Okay. Aside from that, I think they'll they'll present it to the town PNC, but PNC can be overridden by the state siting council. So ultimately, the decision is not going to be an ordinary decision. If I'm wrong, please somebody tell me. No, you're right on the way I understand it. You're exactly right, Joe. It's going to be at the uh, state level siting council. Yeah. So we're crazy not to do it. Based on Bob, Bob yeah, no. question, basically, we really. Yeah, worst case it, scenario, as Joe had indicated, we'd be. We, we, we wouldn't be the beneficiary, and you and you have a, a, a solar farm there, and we're not benefiting from it. So downside. or or it, maybe they don't do the deal at all, uh, but the owner uh, can do whatever he wants with it, and maybe he builds houses on it. And I I don't know. But. So now you so so tonight you're just looking for permission to enter into negotiations with Citrine, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it you know, council? On one thing. Yeah. I don't think it's it's that quite cut and dry. I do think the siting council takes into consideration the position of the town. So if we as a council are opposed to doing this, and if our PNZ is opposed to placing it in this piece of land, I think that's going to carry weight with the state of Connecticut. But it's not controlling. I think uh, the way my mind's thinking about it now, and I think Lou I can, oh. might be around the same, uh, the same point is that from hearing all this, I think I think we should consider it, and then I think as long as we can consider it, we can control it too. And you know they've they've worked with us as far as setting it back off of Forest Road, mm -hmm. 200 feet, and they're looking to work with us like that too. And I think if we don't cooperate and we don't go into a contract with them, we also give up control as well, and we might see those some of those closer to the closer to the road and, and so forth. So um, where my mind's at right now is I think it's something that we should consider. Yeah, yeah I agree with Ron. Well, I, I have a question. Um, so <clears throat> during the length of the contract, say pick any, any time frame, five, 10 years, the company goes out of business. What, what happens to the contract? Good question. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Chella, could, did you hear the question from Deputy Mayor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so if we ha we have successors, let's just say um, bankruptcy administration takes over, um, and as long as the the system is producing power and ever, um, I'm sorry, I keep on saying ever sorry. United Illuminating is giving you your credits. Everything is working according to plan. Um, there's no change from your perspective. Let's just say we um, were truly bankrupt and our, you know, or financing something went really um, sour, um, and we stopped producing power. Uh, we're not so if we stop producing power and the system is not working anymore, you don't get any credits. United Illuminating doesn't get their power, so they don't give you any credits. The contract says if you don't get any credits from United Illuminating, you don't pay anything to us. Period. And then at that point, it's an obsolete, let's just say, God forbid, um, piece of equipment sitting there, which is when we have this conversation that you just started to have about the decommissioning and removal. Um, because if we're bankrupt, presumably we're not paying our lease payments to the landlord as well, right? Because he has the right to kick us out from there. Um, we're completely like out of the picture with our financing. And um, not only do we not produce, we're not paying our leases, the landlord is going to kick us out as well. Um, so a lot of things fall apart, but in re in as long as we're producing and United Illuminating is actually giving you your credits, mm -hmm. contract is still in effect with successors as long as they're honoring their end of the deal. You would think like any other deal, right? Let's just say you bought a build, you're you're a building owner, you have a tenant, and um, and then the building went bank bankrupt. Someone else took over the building. As long as they're servicing the building and they're not kicking you out you pay your lease and everything goes according to plan it's i don't know if it's a good example but that's it's a similar situation but if we're not producing if the bankruptcy in your mind is tied to 
the system not producing any power, if that's what that means, uh, which won't be the case anyway, because the system will produce and whoever takes over from a financing perspective, um, even if it's a bankruptcy administration, it will keep on producing what it's producing. Um, to the extent that the system is not producing, something is broken, we stopped the system, we turned it off, you will not pay anything because your contract, it blatantly says in the contract, you only pay for what you get. You don't get benefit, benefits, you don't pay. Thank you. Great, thank you. And during uh, the meeting where you guys came and presented this to us, you said that you'd put bushes around it where you see it from the road. Do you still plan on doing that? Chella, were you able to hear that? Yeah, we're, 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 we want to work with you. Um, we want to work with the town. We want to get your input. We want to get the neighbor's input. Um, we kind of want to go to that stage, actually. We're eager to move on to that stage where if we can um, have a successful contract negotiation with you, we want to start putting our permit package together with everybody's input, like the way that you guys gave input, you know, move it a little bit further from the street 200 feet with these kinds of bushes. Um, I believe um, there's some respected landscape architect or landscaper in town that has helped with the Sunflower Project. We can get their help. We also have spoken to the Connecticut Organic Farmers Association, um, the head Dana Brewster. She's um, friendly with our company. Um, she's the um, owner of Hickory's Farms. Um, and um, she suggested that she can help us with the pollinator path because they know the native plants really well. Um, so we can put them together with uh, your local landscape architect and Dana, uh, which she's a fierce protector of all farmland, um, but they like a renewable energy and um, we can work with them. So we're, we really are willing to work with you. We're not here to actually um, come up and put a piece of equipment that's going to take away from the look of the town um, at all. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, so do we need a motion? There's a suggested motion uh, in, the, uh, in the memo if you want to use that, or you can modify. Do you have any comments on it? I don't have I have it if you want, I'll make it. Yeah, Mike, right. just the, uh, the caveat that we wanted to add to it, too. Well, you could add the caveat. I'll make the motion. Okay. I move that the town council by supports installation of two megawatt ground mounted solar array at 127 Forest Road and authorizes the town manager and town attorney to negotiate a contract with Citrine Power LLC for the purchase of power produced from the site at a reduced rate. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I'd just like to add that uh, two council members be part of that negotiation. Um, uh, Rose has expressed interest, and I would also be interested as well. Uh, no, I have no objections to that. I'll second that. We won't necessarily both be there at the same time, but it's one of us will be. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, motion was made by Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Gold. Uh, any further discussion? Mike, can you just repeat the motion, or just say what was added to the motion? I have it in my packet here, but I didn't hear what was added. Yeah, uh, Ron added that uh, the motion should include uh, you and, and Ron as additional uh, individuals as part of the negotiating team. Okay. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Michelle, can I have a vote, please? Sure. With all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Thank you, Chella. Thank you, Roger. Um, we'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you. We look forward to it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank I only you. have one quick question for you. Someone had asked online as far as the personal property tax on the uh, solar array. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Is that paid by you or by the property owner? Um, so there's the personal property taxes, the array itself, the, the equipment is exempt under, under the virtual net metering program. 
Um, you can change the, um, I guess, the underlying property tax. The real estate tax is different than the personal property tax that we pay on the equipment. So the equipment is exempt, but the real estate taxes can be changed. Um, and it's on us a little, a little bit to an extent. Um, so we're not using all, I think it's 27 acres. We're proposing to use maybe eight to 10. So if you decide that you're going to increase that or the tax assessor on the eight to 10 acres, we take that on. The other 17 acres, if it's still being farmed, you know, it, it can stay however it's gonna take to stay. Okay, thank you. Um, it's gonna be commercial, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, I think on that uh, last one, it was uh, uh, Walter seconded. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, review and approval of bid number two, 2020 2021. Specifications for replacement of Vernum cast iron section of the boiler for the North Brantford Auditorium. I think, I think. Uh, Michael, I think this can be reverted to the uh, Board of Ed. Yeah, this is yeah, right. So is we, we we tabled this one. Uh, I think Rose Angeloni, Councillor Angeloni, had questions as to why um, why this uh, was here before the council, and uh, we now have Bill Chody here. And I think the question was whether or not it was a capital project or not. This is n not. This is something that's in Bill's uh, budget and maintenance budget that. Uh, that he'll cover, but uh, was under the impression that all of these uh, larger projects had to come through the council. And okay. I think the distinction is um, that if, if it's on the capital improvement plan, a larger item, then it should be here. If it's a regular item in their in their budget, uh, it should it should stay with them. So you 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 could go forward with approving this. Bill is here to answer any questions uh, that you may have. Uh, you could send it back and let him go do his thing, or you can you can approve it. Um, but th yeah, that I, th I think. We've now since then clarified um, where the, where the line is. Okay. In terms of projects or in terms of bids. Okay, I think we should send it back. So is it? And Rose, I don't know if you yeah. were able to hear that. If yeah, we're referring it back to the board. Yeah. Of Ed. That's the board yeah. Of Ed. I, I think it should just go back to the board of Ed because it's yeah. in their budget and yeah. we don't have anything to do. With, it's not part of the budget. Right. So they should handle that. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Okay, next we have a, a new new business discussion and, and action. This uh, one is review and approval of bid specifications for bid number three, 2020-2021, new roof or, or limited roof repair for the North Rampage Police Department. Right, so in the last discussion, uh, you asked to, to have this uh, ready and brought back for, for this meeting, and you d deliberated on whether or not it would be a new roof or, or you know, patch job, uh, you know, repair, I should say. Uh, and so it's written as uh, an opportunity to, uh, to do both, and that's the, the spec that's uh, before you for, for approval, and that uh, uh, Fran and the chief and, and Kurt, myself, and uh, team effort to try and get that done and put together to, to get that uh, finished for tonight's meeting. So that's what's before you. And um, I don't know if there are any, any questions, um, but uh, you know, it, 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 one issue was raised in terms of the uh, talk to the commissioner uh, chairman, and um, you know, it's you know the issue of the the, the mold there and, and the uh, the logistics around trying to um, have a pre-bid conference and roofers and, and getting there to, to look at that uh, is, is gonna take some uh, scheduling uh, effort uh, with, with the department. And the deputy's here, I'm not sure if he can speak uh, to that uh, issue, but it was brought to my attention late this afternoon uh, that uh, you know bidding this out um, it, it is not going to be so easy as, as I thought it, and straightforward as I thought it would be. Um, well, the problem, problem is, obviously, is what we talked about for the, the past four months is, is risk. Um, one of the reasons we brought the company in to look at the project is because this is a company that's worked for the town for many years on many projects before. Um, and they're really well versed in, in what they do. This is probably one of the most critical projects I'll oversee
very well with the police department so far. Um, the, the disease is, uh, is not out of the state yet, um, and we risk as a 24-7 operation um, of, of walking multiple people through, uh, whether we do checks or not, um, that, that, that can enter our building. And that puts us at another critical stage um, of an unknown of what's going to take place. Um, so these are all things to, to keep in your mind and consider um, that to, to have all these people, and whether we do it at one time and bring in small groups or whatever it is, um, they're going to be going back through dispatch. They're going to be coming through the entire building. Um, it, it, it's going to put that at extreme risk of, uh, of possibly bringing uh, Deputy Chief, when Munger was there, wh what exactly did they have to access? Where, as far as the roof, because I know the basement's being handled separately. Yeah. So just as far as the roof, what, what exactly did they have to do inside the building? They had the access for the roof is, is, is through the interior, is, is uh, between uh, my office um, and the, the 901 center. So there's, there's no way to, to bypass it, like through an outside door to get inside to actually see. Um, the cables that mount Cable, there's a tower that comes up, and with that tower, there's a point to point system with a radio system. So that, that tower sh has a, a microwave on it that shoots to our main hub. Uh, that's how all our communications go back and forth. We were hoping to have, if we had the, the fiber project completely done, which, which we were working on, uh, we'd have a backup source because that connects to the phone lines or whatever if something happens with that, that point to point access. Um, unfortunately, that's not coming up in the, in the near future. The problem is with those cables, you can't just disconnect the cables and lift it up on that on that tower. There's actually going to be a crane there or something um, to keep it lifted up just the right amount with a radio vendor there watching it. So because if it goes too far left, too far right, too far up, too far down, it, we're going to lose the entire communication system. And it's not just something you say we're going to set back down and, and hit the reset button. It doesn't work that way. Do you know for sure that that's what has to happen? Because I've also heard that it's actually mounted to the lower roof and it comes up through the second roof. So is, do they actually have to do that or There's can they just roof and seal around it? You, you, that's, that's a cool question for the vendor. I think that'd be doing the work. Okay. Um, obviously with, with our discussions, they, they feel um, that they have to replace the uh, plywood that, that goes, there's large bolts that come through on the sides that hold those cables. Um, and you can't just take one off without stabilizing it. Um, the, the large tower that comes up, that comes up through the second roof of the, of the building, through the center of the building. Um, and that's, that's the whole problem. It's like you just do one at a time. But they feel as from their first looks at it um, and their evaluations that they're going to have to replace the plywood around that area to re-secure it and, 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 and tie it back down. Um, we've also had our radio vendors out there working with this company as well. And, uh, and that's also where the mold is. So that's why they think they have to right. cut out those areas. I mean, obviously, the mold's going to get worse because the humidity rises and the temperatures go up. And, and, a, and a temporary tower doesn't make sense? The, the, the cost and uh, the planning to put something like that together, um, I think we'll be having this conversation next year. And that's, that was a question we brought up with our radio vendor. How, how else can we do this with I got you. Thank you. Officer Lovelace, we um, we definitely have to do the whole roof over. I can't patch just the one area. Uh, I think that's a, a call that you have to make as a council. Um, the, the, the entire roof um, is at its end of life. Um, whether you want to just do a patch job in, in those specific areas, that's that's something that I think is a budgetary item on your on your uh, our suggestion obviously be, you know, depending on what you foresee, if the building project goes forward, if we can foresee for that building, you don't want to be sitting here two years from now replacing the roof at a higher cost. We really have some of the areas where that's not 
because we are talking about building a new police station and that should be happening in the next couple of years. I mean, we, we don't need a 20 or 30 year roof because I mean, that building's in such rough condition, I'm sure we'd be taking it down. I'm, I'm assuming that's what we'd be doing after we build a new police station. Well, I think that's why the bid, you know, that's why we had the conversation last time. I think that's why the bid's going out as a two-part for a new roof and a repair. Right. And so then when we get that information back, then we can we can have that discussion at that time. Two options. Okay, thank you. My, my personal feeling is I think it should go out to bid. Um, put up plastic, come in the front door, come in the side door, or come in the front door that goes into the meeting room, put plastic up, seal off that area, have your vendor walk through at a specific date and a specific time, whoever makes it, bids on it, whoever doesn't, doesn't. And uh, go with it that way. You know, this way you seal off the dispatch area, nobody goes in that front door, you know, through the building there. There's only one way and that area to go up through is in front of uh, what, Lieutenant's office or what, what office is that, Jim? Uh, it's, it's right, um, it's between mine and the chief. There's yeah, the so it's, it's close to that far side of the building, close to that meeting room. So if you get plastic up, seal it off. So you, you mean know? access it through the conference room area? There? Yeah. Yeah, that, that doable, Jim? Uh, there's two points in the building to access through, so yeah. Okay. I mean, my job is to, is to bring you the concerns of the commission. Yeah. Um, and, and it's for, for your body to decide from there. You know, yeah. Obviously, we're not trying to force anything. Um, but say we did do something like that. We put up, or we had somebody put up plastic. Obviously, the people coming in are completely, you know, wearing all the PPE, face shield, mask, blah, 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 everything. And if, gloves. If is, your body tells me that they're coming through with a bid, then we'll make whatever precautions that we, we feel will be necessary is the best way for you to answer it and try to give you a plan off of I got you. I, I, I respect that. Thank you. We'll take all that into consideration. I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. yeah three I agree. Four, the only three problem eight. is, you know, Mike, Mike was here when we bid the old um, town hall, Joe was here. Um, we had an estimate of what, 50,000 plus? Mm -hmm. And the guy came in at 25,000. Okay. Half the price. Yeah, I mean, we got a bid here for sixty something thousand. You know, I think it might come in half the price. You know, and I don't want to be sound cheap, but half yeah. the price is a lot better than. Well, especially if we're talking about potentially knocking the building down. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, a repair and fix might even be cheaper. You know. Right. Right. I think. I think. I think we need to. Get some prices. Yeah. I think it would be beneficial. So if we were to take a three or four hour, hour period, put the plastic up, they all have to show up in that period. And yeah. If it comes, comes. Got and a that's specific it. date and specific time. Public works or somebody could put plastic up and you know seal the area off and you know that's it. They walk in, they walk out, and then that's it. If they have to climb up into the roof area. They that's climb their up time. The roof area. But sounds like a good idea. Good idea. Could it all be coordinated between the purchasing agent and the? Um, is that something like? Is that something that needs to be in the bid spec? Yeah, or it'll, is it it'll it'll be in there. There's usually a walkthrough um, date and time. Yeah, we're gonna, we, right. There's a there's a pre bid conference uh, date and time to be determined. We didn't put it in here. It's just it's a placeholder. We'll 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 obviously need uh, a sit down internally here um, with with the PD and the purchasing and Fran myself. Because uh, I'm, I'm hearing two two major concerns, which is obviously um, not only the officers and exposure, but this communication system that tied through the roof. So those those two major things, we've got to make sure we're uh, we're clear and, and a plan uh, to address that um, as as we put this out on the street. And the first thing will be that pre bid conference, and that's a mandatory. So if they don't show up for that, we're not looking at bid. And in that pre bid conference, you would go over all the PPE requirements and all yeah, that stuff? Go, yeah, we'd have, that's why we'd have a pre discussion. Okay. So, de de developing a plan for the pre bid conference, and then, and then secondary to that, whoever, whoever actually wins the bid, uh, and then having a sort of pre, pre construction, pre roofing uh, 
uh, conference as well uh, to make sure we'll, we'll go through those steps. Sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Do you need anything uh, from us on this, Mike, a motion or anything? Yeah, motion to approve the... Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve that. bid number three, the 2021 new roof or limited roof repair for the North Brantford Police Department, 264 Forest Road, North Brantford, Northford, Connecticut, 06472. I'll second it. All right, motion was made by Councilor Duty, seconded by Councilor Policia. Uh, any further discussion? No. Uh, can we have a vote, Michelle? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained. Okay. Uh, next is re review and approval of bid specifications for bid number four, 20, uh, 2020 to 2021, fence for parks and rec. Yeah, so the bid for the fence is in your packet as well, and uh, Jesse's here to uh, answer any questions you may have. Simple motion to approve if you like the bid spec. Page is that on? Do we have a page? Murray, I think that's yours, right? 87. Want to make that? Can you make it? You want me to make that? Yeah. I move that we approve bid spec for bid number four, 2020-21 fence for parks and recreation. I'll second. Okay. Motion was made by Councilor Diamond, seconded by Councilor uh, Badmaster. Any further discussion? This is just a replacement for North Farms Park? Okay, can we have a vote, Michelle, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right, next is uh, discussion and action on re revision of animal control agreement with the town of Brantford. <coughs> I think uh, Anthony's on, uh, can walk us through the uh, discussion negotiation with uh, Brantford Animal Control. There's an agreement and suggested motion, but is available for any questions you, you may have for, uh, for that contract. Anthony, the funds that are coming back for um, dog programs and donations and stuff, is that ironed out? I didn't hear what you said, Any sorry. revenue generated? Any revenue generated? Yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. It, it, cha it changes the allocation from our percentage of operating cost to now our, per our percentage of the net operating cost. So we will be the beneficiary of any revenues they derive, uh, whether it's camp uh, fees that they charge for the camps. Uh, they have there or any kind of other revenues whether it's adoption or redemption revenues so it's it's a very good uh, change uh, on our side because again it, it goes from just paying a portion of the expenses to the net operating costs uh, i know we talked several times about this already and i thought honestly we had actually adopted it uh, and it wasn't until the uh, town of Brantford had asked for our copy of it what we had voted on that so we realized that we never really got the formal council adoption. Again, it's been talked about several times uh, during the budget and so on. Uh, the, one, the one thing that is interesting or, or is noteworthy is that the fee that's in there, uh, Brantford agreed to change the parameters to allow us to pay the percentage of net operating costs. However, they didn't want to go backwards. So if we had put the formula in place based on this new formula, it would have resulted in a lower fee from them to us uh, and their agreement that the caveat that uh, the town attorney drew in there and, and everybody seems to be on board with is that our number will stay at that same level, 130,813, until such time as the formula dictates a higher number. 
So the estimate from the finance director from Brantford is probably about two or three years at that level before it increases. And again, once the formula dictates a higher number, that's what we'll be paying. But until that time, it's locked in at that 138.13. That was the 18-19 number. That's what we're going to be paying them, 19-20 and 20-21 and possibly 21-22 as well. So they're still making money on the formula itself. But it's a good change for the town. The town attorney, Mr. Marino, reviewed it, actually drafted a couple different versions of it. And once you guys bless it, we'll send it over to the town of Brantford. They know it's coming. We've talked with them several times about it already. It's just a matter of you guys adopting it, and then we'll kick it over to them for their action. All right, I'll make the motion. Here be it resolved that the North Brantford Town Council approves the revised intergovernmental agreement for animal control services with the town of Brantford and authorizes town managers to execute document. Furthermore, the town council instructs the town manager to move forward to the Brantford First Selectman. I'll second. Thank you. 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 Thank
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. I just have a, was the motion as stated in the packet? Yes. Yes. Yes, Rose. Okay. Okay. Next is uh, contingency transfers for year 2019-2020. Yeah, this, this is basically for internal purposes only. This, you may recall, there, the town is in negotiation uh, with uh, a tower rental situation, and the full amount was put into contingency. Uh, a portion was transferred previously by the council. This just transfers the balance. It does not say we're paying that particular bill. It just basically locks it up. We'll put a purchase order in. Uh, to lock it up and depending on how the negotiation goes, but I didn't want the uh, appropriation for contingency to lapse. So we're going to uh, move it to the pro proper line. Does that, does that mean that you're adding another 8,000 to the 18,000? I'm sorry, Marie, say again? In other words, are you, I see 18,000 already down into the tower, right? So is that Correct. Like, it's another eight, almost another 9,000? Correct. Correct. The total, I think, was 20, whatever those two it to add up to. That's what the council put in contingency at the beginning of the year, 2975, something like that, 2675. And one piece was already transferred over. You're right, on April 21st. This just transfers the second piece over to lock it up uh, via a purchase order. It does not mean that this is what you know we're paying the gentleman. It's just to to um, secure that contingency appropriation that was put in the 1920 budget. So this is a lot more than we've been paying in the past. Because we're taxing them a lot more than we paid and taxed them in the past. Okay. So shall I make the motion then? Yeah. The motion that the town manager is hereby authorized to appropriate from reserve for contingency account number 101-4703-760-0000. Second. Okay. Motion was made by Councilor Diamond, seconded by Councilor Plichia. Uh, any further discussion? It, is there a discussion on this one? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Rose. Well, so my only concern on this is that we, from last year when we had the town manager's um, evaluation, we were going to a merit increase for this year, and we don't have any indication of how this twenty thousand is getting divvied up, or whatever it is, twenty nine. Yeah, yeah we're, we're actually not there yet. We were just finishing up the uh, previous one, Rose, on the uh, uh, the eight thousand nine fifteen. Yeah, so we're still on. I thought we voted on that one yeah. already. Nope, just about to. Okay. Oh, so okay. This sorry. Is seven E. Yeah, that was E. Okay. Yeah. Um, was E. Okay, thank you. Take a vote? Yeah. Uh, motion was made, mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, we need a, yes. We need a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Next is contingency transfers for year 2020-2021. Right, so Rose, we're on we're on the item you have a question about item F. Um, yes, I would like to make a motion to table it until we have more information in regards to how this is being spent. I'll second that. What was the end of her statement? She wants to table it until when? She has more information on how the money will be spent. Okay. Okay. Motion was that made. Was, that was part of the town manager's um, evaluation last year that we were going to a merit-based system. Right. And 
we haven't seen anything on that and we haven't given them any guidelines as far as what range of increases to right, go but, yeah, for but, on all the administrators. Yeah. This is for 2021, isn't it? Correct. Right. For the current year. Uh, mm -hmm. 2020. 2021. It's I guess we'll yeah we'll have to I'll have to discuss it I'm not sure if that's an executive session or, or, or not but um, yeah my, my recollection when we went forward uh, with a merit base and Budgeted for that and put it in the, in the budget to to do that. Well, let's table it. Till yeah, we get it needs to be tabled for further review. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, motion was made by uh, the table by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Diamond. Uh, no, no further discussion. I just have one question because the newer people weren't here last year for that. Should we abstain? Or can we vote on it? No, you vote it. To table it? Yeah. Okay, Michelle. With all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained. So what is it? To table it? Because I can't hear you. Yes, yeah, so sorry. It. Motion to table. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is citizen statements and petitions. Oh, Mike, Andy, do you have anything? Uh, stand by. Anthony, do you have anything on Facebook? Uh, back. There was some comments before. So go back there. Uh, comment from um, from Cliff Potter, uh, the council has to listen to our police personnel uh, that research the proper way to do the roof project without going dead in the process. We don't want to dial 911 and get a recording and no one can take our call. Um, Bobby Amendola, if we didn't play around with the building the new police station, we would not be in this position. Now we need to spend precious dollars when that could be going towards the upgrades or new technology for our folks who protect us. Such a waste of money. Uh, another comment by, by Bob. Come on, you guys. We didn't even put this out for other companies for competitive bids if that property was open for this. Put the solar panels on top of the new high school. Uh, Donna Persley, so we'll lose a beautiful field and might not get any benefits. Uh, Penny, Vistakis, Riggiones, uh, who will benefit from the solar power field? That may need to be, re re you know, recapped for the, for the public. What are those benefits? Can the solar field be put on the back piece of that property that's a dump and can't be used for farmland or residential development? Um, another comment, there's a solar farm in North Haven on, on Milltown Avenue. Look how pretty that is. Uh, great, another tax-free item in town, just what we need. And uh, Hank Petroski said he would like to see the solar project proceed. There was one comment on the, on the uh, chat, uh, Bonnie Szymanski. Uh, she supports the solar project. If the town does not approve it, it will still be built and on another town will reap the benefits. We have solar and after a while, you don't see the panels support this project. It will save the town considerable money. That's all, that's all the uh, comments. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks. Thank Mike, nothing? Nothing on, com no, on the email comments, no. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to move into executive session. I make a motion to move into executive session with the uh, town manager. Second. Town attorney. Town attorney. Has he worked today? 
Jesse? Yeah. Jess? Jesse? 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 Can you hold on one second? Just meet with you. Can I just have a minute to talk yep. to Jesse? Yeah. Anybody, you vote on that? Yes. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Obviously, I did not get more names given, so I don't know if it's valid.